Hello everybody, my name is Mahmoud Salam. I'm a general surgery trainee in West of Scotland Deanery. Today we present our review in laparoscopy is an available alternative to open surgery in the treatment of perforated peptic ulcers. Peptic ulcer is a mucosal defect which penetrates in the muscularis mucosa and muscularis propria due to acid pepsin overproduction. Up to 90% of ulcers are associated with H. pylori colonization, which is a spiral-shaped bacterium that lives in the acidic environment of the stomach. Other causes that may induce or aggravate ulcers are drugs like aspirin, Glavix, and non anti-inflammatory drugs. The complications of peptic ulcers are very catastrophic. They include either perforation or erosion. If the perforation occur at the anterior surface of the stomach or duodenum, it may lead to acute peritonitis, while if it was on the posterior wall, it may lead to pancreatitis, and sometimes it may perforate into this common bile duct, which may result in aerobilia and cholangitis. On the other hand, erosion of the GI tract wall leads to spillage of the stomach or intestinal content in the abdominal cavity and subsequently causing peritonitis. The first report of a series of patients presenting with perforation of a duodenal ulcer was made in 1817 by Travers. The earliest operative description was made by Mikulix in 1884. However, the first successful operation did not happen until 1894. And now we should ask ourselves a question. What are the potential complications of perforated peptic ulcer? In most cases of perforation, gastric and duodenal contents leaks into the peritoneum, leading to peritonitis with increased risk of infection and abscess formation, and subsequent third space loss, which in turn leads to inadequate circulatory volume, hypotension, and decreased urinary output, which in other words means shock. With the presence of peritonitis and free GI contents in the abdominal cavity, this will lead to interference with the diaphragmatic movement, impairing the expansion of the lung bases, which in turn can lead to lung problems, which may include atelectasis. The traditional management of perforated peptic ulcer disease has been by a Graham omental batch and a through abdominal lavage. Recently, perforated peptic ulcer has been subst substituted by laparoscope. However, trials at the present emphasize that this must not be considered as the standard management. The only proven advantage of laparoscope technique appears to be decreased operative time and post-operative pain. So, in general, with laparoscopic technique, there is less pain, there's precision in the performance, and of course, better cosmetic results, less injury to tissues, and subsequently, faster recovery and increased safety. In laparoscopic surgery, theater set up is as shown in the picture. The surgeon would stand on the left hand side of the patient. Assistants will stand on the right hand side while the laparoscopy stack would be placed at the right shoulder of the patient. The axis is usually via four ports 10 mm umbilical ports for the camera, 5 mm ports placed in the left and right upper quadrants, and another 5 mm port in the epigastrium. Once the defect is identified, long tailed sutures involving the full thickness of the bowel wall are placed, then a pedicled omental flap is mobilized to be placed on the ulcer and then 
the tail sutures are tightened as shown. The adoption of laparoscopy first approach in patients suffering from perforated peptic ulcer was associated with accepted rates of mortality and morbidity. The approach could also be selectively adopted in patients with boy score more than two, provided their ASA grading is low and they are hemodynamically stable. The conversion to open from laparoscopy is mainly due to two reasons. First, difficulty in finding the site of perforation, and secondly, presence of dense peritoneal adhesions. In a recent DANCH study, which included around 730 patients undergoing surgery for perforated peptic ulcer, the laparoscopy first approach rate was 32.8%, while the rate of conversion from laparoscopy to open surgery was 24.5%. On the other hand, in the UK study, which reported a much lower rate of conversion in their cohort of patients, whereas 13.1% underwent laparoscopic surgery, and the rate of conversion to open surgery was only 6.9%. The results of this study showed that open surgery was conducted in 60% of patients while laparoscopy conducted in only 30% of patients. The contraindications to laparoscopic surgery were boy score more than two, repeated laparotomies, and poor surgical abilities. There was no age limit for laparoscopic management. It was provided to patients between 30 and 80 years of age. However, Patients endured an omental patch depending on the diameter of the perforation and the friability of the tissues are surrounding the ulcer. The median duration of the surgery was 70 to 125 minutes for the laparoscopic approach and 40 to 70 minutes for the open approach. The conversion rate was 33% which was attributed to adhesions or diffuse peritonitis. ICU admissions was required for 25 patients, and the mean duration of hospital stay was 9 days plus or minus 5 days. So in a nutshell, perforated peptic ulcer is common in surgical emergencies. Patients with Perforated peptic ulcer disease typically need emergency surgery to seal the defect and flush the peritoneal cavity. Laparoscopic approach has been developing recently as it has less post-operative complications, shorter hospital stay, reduced surgical site infection rate, and shorter nasogastric tube length. Thank you.